quickly. Um, please put on speaker view so you can see who is the speaker. <laughs> because if you put on uh, you know screen uh, tiles, you'll get everybody's face there, right? So please put on speaker view. Uh, my name is Karthi. I'm so uh, happy that you guys can join me today for this session. Uh, the session will take about 90 minutes. Um, I hope to finish in 90 minutes. Um, but unless you all have questions and answers, then I probably will prolong a little bit more. Uh, but I hope you are hearing me loud and clear now. And um, I've got um, a lot of things to share with you guys. I've got videos, I've got slides. I've got a lot of testimonials to tell you how powerful law of attraction is and also how powerful Ho'oponopono is. Now, many of you will be very familiar with um, law of attraction because it's, it's been very famous ever since the book, uh, The Secret came out um, about what, maybe 15 years ago. But the book Secret actually does not tell you how to apply Law of Attraction. It actually tells you how powerful Law of Attraction is. And uh, I was also uh, the type of person who read the book and wanted to find out how to actually apply Law of Attraction. So what happened was in 19, sorry, 2008, I went to Canada to be certified as a Law of Attraction trainer by Michael J. Lozier. And subsequently, I started to uh, teach um, Law of Attraction. So I've been teaching Law of Attraction for the last 12 years. And over the years, I've actually also incorporated Ho'oponopono into my sessions, which um, if you are not familiar with Ho'oponopono, don't worry, I'll explain to you what it is shortly. Um, I, if you go to my Facebook account after this session today, you will actually find a lot of postings, a lot of um, uh, programs that I do on Ho'oponopono and Law of Attraction that you can also join in, right? So today's session, like I mentioned to you, is about um, uh, 90 minutes. And uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start uh, sharing my screen. Um, so bear with me while I do that. Um, okay, because I have a lot of slides to show you guys. Okay, right. Brilliant. I, I believe you can see my screen now. And um, uh, as you can see, um, the, the talk today, um, okay, the talk today is basically, I, I, I'm calling it the science of designing your life deliberately, okay? Um, so a lot of people, what they do, they live by default in their life. That means um, they, they just, you know, live their life because um, somebody told them that, you know, they are star and the, the sun and the moon is not in the correct place. Or palmies maybe told them that their palm shows that they're going to have bad luck. Or maybe the parents told them that, you know, your you know, luck is not good or whatever and so on and so forth, you see. So a lot of people, what is happening is that they live a life by default because of what they've been told what their parents have told, what their teachers have told, and they don't, they don't realize how powerful they are. I, I, I'll give you a simple example, okay? Simplest of the example I can give you, yeah? Uh, like, for example, if somebody gets 10 A in an exam, a student who has just finished SPM has got 10 straight A's in the exam, what normally happens is people will uh, talk to the girl and, or boy and say, my God, you got 10 A, yeah? Oh, my God. And uh, father works as what? A lawyer, my God. Okay, mother works as what? Doctor, oh, no wonder you're so clever because your father and mother are lawyers and doctors. Now, a lot of people tend to believe that, that the, the girl is clever because of the father and mother and because of genes, you see. But listen, I, my parents were rubber tappers. I grew up in a family of 12 brothers and sisters. When I used to go to school, you know, whatever they call the scheme, scheme bantan, makanan, scheme bantan, anything called scheme, my name was automatically there. So obviously, obviously that it's not nothing to do with my parents, you see. And it's not about the education level. It's just along the way, I think a lot of us live by default because of what people have told. So I'll hopefully, after today's talk, you will now start to think that you can design your life. I don't know your age. You know, I don't know, um, you know, how old you are. It really doesn't matter. But I think if you decide to follow what I'm going to share with you today, and after today, you go to my Facebook account, you can follow the programs. I do. I'm currently running an eight weeks program. Uh, we are already into the fourth week now, but you can still join in because all the recordings are still available in my Facebook uh, group for that uh, particular program. But today's talk for the next 90 minutes, hopefully, will open up your mind a little bit about the power of law of attraction. Yeah. So um, let's do that. Okay. Um, some fundamentals I want to share with you. Okay. So how did law of attraction start? I think uh, many of you would probably know about law of attraction because of the book, The Secret, and the video, The Secret, that came out maybe about 15 years ago. And because you've read the book, you've seen the video, you know that uh, what, is, what is law of attraction all about. But actually, I want to tell you that um, all the religious scriptures, be it the Gita, be it the Bible, be it the Quran, all the religious scriptures actually talk about law of attraction, where the simple sentence is, whatever you ask, the universe will give you. Whatever you ask, God will give you. You know, and that's in all the scriptures. 
uh, if you if you look at it spiritually, it is always said in all the religious scriptures that whatever you ask will be given. But if you want to look at it in terms of um, uh, what do you call it, um, um, scientifically, in 1910 there was a book called The Science of Getting Rich that was written by Dennis Wattles. You know, I'm going to show you the book later. Oh no, Wallace Wattles, sorry, Wallace Wattles. I'm going to show you the books later in the, during my talk. But and I will give you an e-copy of this book free if, later if you text me. Yeah. But in that book that was started in, uh, that was written in 1910, which was 110 years ago, uh, Wallace Wattle actually says that whatever we want in life, we can get if we want to, if you just know how to communicate with the universe. So today, I'm going to teach you and guide you on how you can communicate with the universe. Now, before we move on any further, I need you to know this part, okay? Sorry. Okay, I need you to know this, that each one of us have got this power within us, maybe you do not know. So I want to, I want to take a little bit of time to talk to you about this power that we have within each other, each of us. Now, I, I, I want to ask a question. Now, I know I can't hear you because uh, you all are muted, but uh, do, do share with me the answers as you go along so that you're talking to yourself or talking to the people who are sitting with you watching this today. Yeah? Now, okay, first and foremost, I want to ask you this question. Yeah? Uh, we all are living beings. We all are living beings, so we have a soul within us, okay? Now, I want to ask you, now, the earth is round, okay? Now, because the earth is round and it's always rotating on in its axis, yeah? Uh, basically we are not we should not be able to stand on earth because it's moving around we should be falling off earth you know we cannot be standing so if i ask you the question uh, why why is it that we are able to stand and uh, be rooted on the onto the ground you will say it's because of law uh, sorry law of gravity would you agree with me i'm sure you agree with me that because you will say law of gravity and that's the reason why we can stand a lot of people have told me this before i've asked them i said how come we can stand um, you know, on, on, on Mother Earth, and we don't fall off, even though it's uh, round, because they say law of gravity. Okay. Then my next question is very simple. Okay. So if you say law of gravity is one allowing us to stand, but when let's say somebody passes away, huh? when they pass away, can they stand or not? Now, the answer is obviously no, they can't stand. Now, do you have law of gravity? Of course, you have law of gravity. Gravity is always there, but they cannot stand. The reason why they cannot stand is because though the law of gravity is there but they've they've lost this power within them there's there's something within them that's gone well that is called the spirit or that's called the soul that's called the anma that's called that whatever you call it that is within you the life within you the energy within you so i want you to understand a little bit about this energy within you which many of us don't know that we can harness and tap and that's what i'm here to talk to you about today now would you agree with me that all living beings will have the same energy agree because as a human being because i have a soul and that's it's very powerful obviously all living beings have this energy so i want to give you a simple explanation first yeah? let's take the mosquito okay now would you agree with me there's and the mosquito has got energy uh, 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 soul within it you'll say yes now now there, there is this this power that mosquito has many of you do not know do you know a mosquito will not bite now, by the way, the mosquito that bites others is normally a female mosquito. Eh? Males are very good. Like they never bite. Like, okay? Female mosquitoes are the ones who bite. That's the first thing you need to know. But the second thing you need to know is, but the female mosquitoes, the mosquitoes that bite, will not bite any pregnant woman who is more than four months pregnant. I, I don't know whether you know that. Do you know a pregnant woman who is more than four months pregnant? If, you go, if a woman is pregnant, eh? she's, let's say, three months pregnant, and she goes to a doctor and says, I want to do an abortion. And the doctor will always say, you can only do an abortion if you are less than three months pregnant. If you are more than three months, you can't because it will endanger the life of the mother and the baby. So what it means is the mosquito doesn't bite a pregnant woman more than three months because the mosquito understands that it will kill two people if it bites them. Or I mean, assuming it's a malarium or an Aedes or whatever like that. But what you need to understand is how did the mosquito know that? Uh, that is the energy that the mosquito has, the power that the mosquito has. You see, a mosquito, the soul is very small, the, uh, the energy is very small. We as human beings, because six senses, if a mosquito can think and understand that power that I cannot bite a woman who is more than three months pregnant, hey, come on, we are human beings, can? Okay, let me give you another example. Okay, let's look at a slightly bigger than a mosquito. Let's look at ants. Huh? Now, in your house, in your house, if you drop a little bit of sugar in your house, okay, drop a little bit of sugar somewhere, do you know the ants will come from all corners will come to the sugar? Now, question is, I want to ask you this today, how did the ants know there is sugar? Now, first and foremost, you need to understand that ants, 
um, uh, only do one thing, which is look for food, eat the food, probably sleep, shit, and die. That's it, finish. They have nothing else. They don't, they don't think about getting married and getting an education, right? So what is the main focus of an end? Look for food, look for food. What is the objective of an end? Look for food, look for food. What's the goal of an end? Look for food. Now, that means the, the soul that is within the end will tell whenever there's food. And now let me explain this. Huh? So when there's sugar on the floor, the end is indicated, told by the soul, there's food there, go and look for it. And that's why the end quickly will come. And you realize something? The end doesn't come directly. It will actually zigzag, 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 and it will come. Now, that is fine. But let me give you another analogy with regards to the end. But let's say, because some of you here, we are very intellectual, accountant, lawyers, engineers. You probably say because the end can smell the sugar, right? I know that. I know that. I've heard that many times. But let me ask you something. Eh? Do you know that like, if you go back home, you can try this at home. You take a bowl of sugar, not a drop of sugar. Take a bowl of sugar. Now you take a, take a plate, pour water. So the plate is full of water. Now you put a bowl of sugar in the middle. Now, obviously, if you say the, smell, the sugar, um, the ant can smell the sugar, obviously the ant can smell better with a bowl of sugar compared to a drop of sugar, correct? Okay, so now you put a bowl of sugar, but you put it in the middle of the water. Now, the ant won't come. The ant does not come. Now, you must listen to me what I'm trying to say. It's not that the ant will come to the plate and look, uh, look at it and say, oh my God, the water, I cannot, and they turn back. No, the ant doesn't take a U-turn. The ant doesn't come. Now, how did the ant know there's water? Let me tell you how. You see, again, the ant has got a soul. And the objective of the ant is, I need to look for food. Now, the moment when you put the sugar in a bowl of water and the ant cannot come, immediately the soul sends a message to the ant there's no food, you can't get it, don't go. And that's why it doesn't come. Now, you know how powerful that is? Because that means if you and I, if we sit down and we write down our goals, if we decide by doing a vision board, what car I want to drive, what, which house I want to live in, do you know the soul which is within us will show us how to get it? Now, I've been teaching this for 12 years and I can tell people, you can be a millionaire, you can drive a BMW, you can achieve any success you want in your life if you understand how to tap the power. So the next 90 minutes, or maybe not 90 now, maybe 80 minutes, I want to share with you how to harness this power. Obviously, I do a program like this for one whole day or eight weeks, over eight weeks. So within 90 days, I cannot share everything with you. So if you really need to know more, please talk to the person who invited you today or look into my Facebook and come and join me in my eight-week program to understand better. Now, so... Three, the third fundamental, huh? so you need now understand we have a soul within us and the soul, if you have clarity about your goal, the soul will know how to help you, okay? Now, let's go to the third one. Now, a lot of people tell me this. So, Mr. Kathy, are you saying that if I have a vision board, if I have a goal, that would mean that I don't need to think of God or pray to God, no need to go temple, no need to go church, no need to go... So, this is a confusion people have among them. So I'll always tell people, I say, hey, hey, so, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm not here to tell you not to go to temple, not to go to church, not to go mosque. I'm just telling you, you need, to, you need to know how to communicate with God. You need to know how to communicate with you. The problem with us is we are, we are so confused, you know. We are, we are like, a, I'm going to show you some examples from there. Sometimes the universe have no idea what are you talking about. I'll give you a simplest example, okay? I'll give you an example, eh? A few examples. First example, do you know not, if, it, if it rains for two whole weeks, what do we all say? Oh my God, why is it raining every day? My God, this is terrible. Every time it rains, it's, it's flooded and oh my God, I hope it doesn't rain. So now you're complaining it's raining, right? Okay, now let's say two weeks there's no rain. Now what do you say? Oh my God, why is it so hot? This is terrible. Malaysia is horrible. You know, it's so hot. I'm perspiring. I wish it doesn't, you know, it rains, you know. Now, you know what's happening now? Now God is confused. These stupid Malaysians, hey, you want to rain or don't want rain? Sometimes the rain is confused. Come halfway, stop already. You don't know whether to come down or not because you're going to scold it. You see how confusing we are because we give wrong messages. I'll give you another example. Eh? Uh, I want you to put up your hands. Okay. How many of you, 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 one of your goals in life is to have more money? Put up your hands. Tell me, how many of you, your goals in life to have more, more money? I'm sure many of you are putting up your hand and raising your hand and say, I want to have more money. Very, very good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is this. Let's say I come and meet you personally and I give you 10 ringgit. Okay, I give you 10 ringgit. All right? Because your goal in life is to have more money. I give you 10 ringgit. Now, my question, my question, do you have more money now? The answer is yes. 
The answer is yes. Because you did not say how much money you want. You just said, I wanted more money. So every time you tell God and you say, oh, I want to be happy. God makes you happy, but you don't realize it. Oh, I want to have more money. Give, God gives you money. Maybe, maybe not the amount you want, because you didn't specify what. You didn't tell exactly how much you want. So what I'm telling you is today that the problem with most of us is we don't exactly tell what you want. You don't. I'll give you another example. Uh, many of you will say, oh, I want to be a millionaire. Mr. Kati, I want to be a millionaire. I always want to be a millionaire. Okay, let me ask you something. If you have a mate in your house who's from Indonesia, do you know her salary normally will be tiga juta rupiah? Do you know you've got tiga juta rupiah? You're already a millionaire because you've got millions of dollars with you. No? But it's rupiah. But the problem is this. You never said, I wanted to be a millionaire with one million ringgit. You didn't say, I want to be a millionaire with one million US dollars. You just said, I want to be a millionaire. I want to be a millionaire. See, the universe will always answer you. The universe will always give you. The problem is you have no idea how to communicate. So today, I hope I can enlighten you and tell you how to do it right in order for you to be able to have the things you're looking for, okay? So I want to start off by telling you this, my friends, that God or universe is not helping anyone defeat anyone. The only one that can ever defeat you is yourself. Very important for you to understand. Don't blame the astrologer. Don't blame the gemologists who gave you the wrong stone. Don't blame the palmies who told you whatever. Don't blame your star and the moon in your... Don't blame anybody. Listen, I will tell you this today. When you're born, maybe you had a fate. Fate is different, eh? Destiny is different. Let me explain that to you. Fate is, yes, when we are born, if you believe in karma, you're born with a certain karma. Now, today's talk, I will tell you how to do a bit of cleansing of your karma. I'll tell you about that later. So when you're born, you are, you are born with a certain fate based on the sins you have done. Or even in your life, if you are very sinful, banyak dosa, dosa tu, uh, okay lah. So banyak dosa, then obviously there is this, uh, you know, um, dosa, dosa that will block you. But what you need to understand is that nobody is ever going to defeat you. If the only person who can ever defeat yourself is you. So if you understand that part, you will know today what to do in order to have the greatness in life. And I will show you so many testimonials today. I will give you ex people who have been for my program and followed my program. Now, this is free. Today's knowledge is all free. Why? Because I want you to go and talk to a lot of people and tell them they too can change your life. I want you to go and talk to the people who are your family members, your friends, and tell them, hey, listen, don't sit in one corner and cry. Don't sit in one corner and think your star is bad. Don't think of you sit in one corner because some stupid astrologer told you your luck is bad or you're born on the wrong date or your numerology is there or your name is wrong. Don't do that. What I need you to understand is you can change all that. Huh? So let's go and look into this. So what is law of attraction? Now, law of attraction is I attract into my life whatever I give attention, energy, and focus. Whether positive or negative. I repeat, huh? I attract into my life whatever I give attention, energy, and focus, whether positive or negative. So what it means is this. On a daily basis, from the time you get up and you know you start gossiping with your friends and talk about other people. I mean, what do we do? I used to work in Bank Nagara. What do we do in the morning? Every morning I go to Bank Nagara. In the morning, what do we do? I talk to with my friends. What do we do? We talk about other people. Lunchtime, what do I do? Meet again, my friend, talk about other people. Evening, what we do, we sit together, we again give attention, energy, and focus, talk about other people. Next day, what we do, we talk again to confirm what we talked yesterday. You see? So what happens is, since we always talk about inflation, money, gaji, ni mahala, itu mahala. So when we give attention, energy, and focus to debts, to talk about problems, relationship, you know, like people say things like, oh, you know, when you first get married, love story. Now, after that, true story. Now, you are already attracting negativity in your life. So, law of attraction is already working for you. But whether positive or negative, depending on what is it that you are thinking of. If you're thinking of positivity, you have positive things in life. If you think of negativity, you have negativity in life. Let me give you some examples, okay? First example. Do you know, when you think of somebody... And suddenly the person calls you. You know, and sometimes, you know, when thinking of somebody or sometimes, ah, they, they, and you say, oh my God, I just thought of you. Okay, that is the first example of law of attraction. And one, one biggest example is, do you know when you think of your mom, your mom will call you? Do you know if you're sick and you think of your mom's soup, your mom will call you and you wonder, my God, how did my mom know? I'll tell you why today. Because you see, your mom carried you for nine months. So you and your mom are connected from the navel port. There are 114 ports from your navel to her 
to connect it. So even though you're born in your outside now, but you're still connected, which is the really reason why when you're lying to your mother, your mother will tell you, don't lie to me. I can know you're lying. That's the reason when you're sick, your mother will call you and say, are you okay? And you'll say, my God, how did my mother know? Huh? Is there a CCT camera in my house? Huh? She seemed to know everything I do. This is the reason, my friends, I'll tell you one thing today. Huh? Moms, uh, your mother is very, very, very important. Please, please make sure you're in good terms with your mother. Please make sure you get blessing from your mother. Please call your mother every day if she's alive and talk to her and ask her whether she's eaten her food and get the blessing because her blessings are very, very, very important for your life to change. Father, it's okay. He donated the sperm. But mother is the one who carried it for nine months. Sorry, I'm just joking. Yeah? Father is also important, but mother is very, very important. Okay? This is what happens. I, let me give you some other example. Ah, okay. Do you know this? I'm sure some of you will agree with me. Do you know that sometimes when you think of a car, you, you know, you know, sometimes you'll say, oh, I love this um, Honda Accord. Oh, I love this BMW. Oh, I really want to buy this BMW X1, you know, or whatever. And you're thinking about the car and you see, well, I would look good in the car. And suddenly you see the car everywhere. You see a bad poster of the car. You see a neighbor driving the car. You go to a shopping center, you see the car. And you say, oh my God, the universe is sending me signals, you know, that this is my car. It is true. You know why? We have inside our brain something called a reticular activation activating system. It's called a RAS. You can Google RAS. It's like a GPS. You know, like for example, you get into a car, you go, you, you key in into the GPS where you want to go, it'll take you right. Uh, similarly, we have a RAS here. Now, that also means anything you put in your RAS will come through. So if you put in your RAS, voila, my relationships things. Voila, my boss is so bad. Voila, I always have a punishment. Voila, my money not enough. That's exactly what is happening in your life. Because that's what you're putting in your RAS. I know that's true. I know you've got issues, but I need you to understand you can change that. The moment you change that, everything will change. Uh, let me show you an example. Uh, you're talking about a car. I want to tell you something else. Talking about a car. Do you know something else? You see, uh, all, all objects has got energy, you know. All objects. Uh, your phone doesn't work. I'll teach you how to do hope on a You talk to your phone and do hope on a your phone will start working. And that kind of energy. i give you an example. Do you know if you're driving a car, you're driving your car, not a new car, your car. Do you know as you're driving your car, sometimes you say, Allah, maybe it's about time to change the car. Lah. Maybe I should get another car. This car, I've been having it for 10 years. Do you know immediately that week, the car will give you problems? As if the car hurt, that you want to sell the car? Ah, you must remember, every living thing has got energy. So be very careful what you say. Eh? People you don't like. Now, between people you like and people you don't like, who do you think the most? I will tell you for sure. Most of you think of people you don't like. I give an example. You're going to the office. You don't like this particular manager. You say, I hope I don't see him. I don't. And right at the entrance, he'll be waiting for you. Or you go to the office. You don't like a particular customer. And you say, I hope you won't call me. I hope you, and he will call you. Or you don't like a particular colleague of yours. And you say, I hope he doesn't see you. Come. Some of you are married. So your auntie always, how come you're not married? How come you're not married? So you're going for a wedding and you say, I hope I don't see Andy. I hope I do. You go into the wedding and the auntie is standing at the entrance and saying, hello, what happened to you? How come you're not married? You say, oh my God, what is this that people I don't like always come to me? You say, now you need you to, I need you to understand that the reason why people you don't like, you see them often because you think of them often. Idiots on the road. What, I mean, what do I mean by idiots on the road? This is actually a real story. Like, that a three-year-old girl got into the car with her mother. And the mother was driving there. As the mother was driving the car, the girl asked the mother, Mommy, Mommy, how come there are no idiots on the road? I repeat, eh? Mommy, Mommy, how come there are no... The mother said, hey, why are you so rude? Eh? How can you call people idiot? Eh? What do you mean by idiot? Eh? Then mommy, the girl says, Mommy, whenever daddy drive, eh? whenever daddy drive, daddy always say, look at the idiot on the road. Look at the idiot in front. Look at the idiot at the back. Look at the idiot. So... The girl has picked up this idea that whenever the, because the father, whenever he's driving, he's looking for idiots. Then what happens is, you'll always see idiots on the road. When the mother is driving, she doesn't think about it. Like, for example, many of you, when you're driving your car, do you know when you're driving your car, suddenly there's a traffic jam? You know what happens? And you quickly look at the side mirror and say, sure, somebody will overtake the car and somebody will use the machine. You know, all Malaysian, all idiots will come. Surely some, and through now one car will come and say, you see, you see, are you, this Malaysian terrible for us. And then you'll say, I'm sure one fella come out right now. You see others will come out. You see, you see, you see, you see, listen, my friends, if you are driving on the road, 90 people, 100 cars, 90 people normally follow the rules. 10 people don't follow the rules. You focus on the 10, you'll only see them. You focus on the 90, you'll have a wonderful journey. Ah, 
Let me ask you another. All these are examples about how powerful law of attraction is. Huh? Cannot sleep because I drink coffee. Now, I want to ask, huh? raise your hands. Huh? I want to see. Huh? How many of you will drink coffee you cannot sleep? Please show me. Indicate, indicate. You okay? Uh, raise your hands or show me that if you drink coffee, I cannot sleep. I want to know. I'm sure there are people out here. I've got about 90 over people now uh, you know, watching me. I'm sure there are people here who will say, if I drink coffee, I cannot sleep. Okay. I've got, okay, see what actually happens is this, yeah? There are 90 of you watching me now live. And of course, we are also on FB live today. So also FB live, we've got people watching me today, right? Now, out of the so many of you, maybe about 10 of you will put up your hand and say, if I drink coffee, I cannot sleep. And I think most of you know that, right? Okay. Now, if there are 90 of you are watching me today, 10 people, if they drink coffee, cannot sleep. If 80 people can drink coffee and sleep. Now, I want to ask you a question here. Yeah? Is it something wrong with the coffee or is it something wrong with the 10 people? Huh. You know the answer. Nothing to do with the coffee is the 10 people. Is the 10 people. Is the 10 people who actually have programmed themselves that they, they drink coffee. Can I say, now, I'm telling you today, coffee doesn't make you stay awake. I'm telling you, I've done my research, I know. If coffee keeps everybody awake, all of you cannot sleep. Correct or not? Like for example, if you take a certain drug, everybody will get high. There's no setting. Some will get high, some won't get high. So similarly, if, if you've got coffee and if you cannot make it, all of you cannot sleep. Let me tell you why some of you put up your hands. Huh? There's not Tarshini. I remember I saw a name Tarshini. I see Shuman put up his hand. I see that uh, Adrian put up the hand. Now, let me tell you why Tarshini cannot sleep. Let me tell you why Tarshini, if you drink coffee, cannot. you know what happened? One day, Tarshini couldn't sleep. This is how she couldn't sleep. Huh? She's thinking, why I cannot sleep? Huh? Why I cannot sleep? Huh? She, because you're tossing and turning in the bed, right? Oh my God, I drank coffee today. Ah, so that is called the first programming into a brain, subconscious brain. I drink because your subconscious brain is your hard disk. Whatever you put there is a virus. So she put inside the subconscious brain. If I drink coffee, I cannot sleep. First programming. Then what happens? Very simple. One day she's she's moving around, she's talking to people, and she's having dinner. When having dinner, she drinks coffee and she says, Oh my god, I drank coffee today. Alama. Sure cannot sleep today because I drink coffee already. Why? So this is the second programming. Then what happens is Tarshini, Adrian, Shuman, what they do is they will tell everybody, I don't know why if I drink coffee, I cannot sleep. I drink coffee, I cannot sleep. I drink coffee, I cannot sleep. Now what happens is programming, 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 programming. Now your hard disk, your, your, your subconscious brain has been programmed, drink coffee, cannot sleep, drink coffee. So now what happens is the programming is there. So whenever you drink coffee, you cannot sleep because your subconscious brain will make sure you cannot sleep. Understand that. Be very careful what you put inside your brain. If you keep saying, I don't know why money, money, money doesn't stick to me. I don't know why when money comes, it finishes fast. I don't know why every time I get bonus, expenses come to me. I don't know why all the guys who come to like me cannot be trusted. All these are programming, my friend. All are programming. Be careful how you program yourself. Ah, another one. I'm sure some of you got children here. And I'm sure some of you will tell your children cannot... Uh, play in the rain. Now, if I ask all of you here, how many of you would like to play in the rain when you're a child and how many of you, most of you will put up your hand. I love to, I'm, I'm from the estate. My parents are Robert Tempest, I grew up in estate. Many, many times I got wet in the rain, never got sick at all because my parents never told me anything. Now, let me tell you something, okay? Now, what happens is this, some of you here, you've got young kids, okay? So let's say you've got a son or daughter. Let's say your daughter's name is Ishwari. So what happens is, okay, let's say Parveen, i put up the hand. So let's say Parveen has got a daughter. Okay, and what happens is the daughter plays in the rain and comes in. Okay, maybe daughter is five years old or six years old. Now, the daughter plays in the rain and comes in. As long as you don't say anything, they won't get sick. But the moment Parvin sees the daughter coming back into the house, the son, Parvin will say, Ah, you got wet in the rain, is it? You see, la? very soon you will be uh, having flu. So, exactly that, that issue, the small girl, in about an hour later, she'll go, Ah, Parvin say, ah, You see, the mother will say, You see, ah, I told you what. Two hours from today, you surely will be starting to cough. Two hours later, the girl will go, oh, ah, there you go. I told you what. Tonight, eh, for sure, you'll have fever. And exactly eh, that night, the girl will say, mommy, mommy, I don't feel well. I got fever. Now, let me tell you something. That young girl got sick, got the flu, got the cough, got a fever, not because of the rain. Rain doesn't cause it. Because the mother told you, you're going to get sick. My friends, let me tell you something. Subconscious brain is very powerful. One of the reasons I don't read newspaper at all. I don't read newspapers at all. I unfriend people in Facebook if they put a lot of negative stuff. 
my WhatsApp groups, if people put all kind of political stuff, stupid stuff, I'll immediately tell them, sorry, eh? If it's WhatsApp group, I'll come out of the group. Because I don't want to. See, you have, a, you have got a garden, your garden, your subconscious brain is your garden. Now you decide, you want to have roses and jasmine, or you want to have lalang and weeds. You've got to be very careful. Choose your friends wisely. Think about what are you reading wisely. Think about what you listen to wisely. Because all this will affect you. And let me tell you something. Many of you might not like the politicians. Many of you might not be happy with the polity or whatever. Let me ask you something. Between the politicians and God, who is bigger? I'm sure most of you here who believe in God, you believe God is bigger. Now, if God is bigger than the politicians, why are you worried about what the politicians are doing? Why are you worried? Because if you believe in God, then you just pray, ask God, God will give you what you want. So don't believe in all this, oh, you know, politicians and the, please laugh. You have this super duper conscious brain, subconscious brain, super conscious brain. Super conscious brain is your soul. Eh? Conscious brain is the one that you're awake and is awake. Subconscious brain is the one that's awake 24 hours, which is your programming. Super conscious brain is your soul that connects you with, the, with God. If you can connect these three together, super. I'll tell you what to do shortly. Yeah, Financial situation. How many of you got financial problems? No, don't raise your hand. Please, please, please. I don't want to see your hands. Eh? I have to ask many of you, Many people will tell me you've got financial problem. Okay. First of all, I must ask you a question before I even tell you. Eh? It's better to have financial problem than have cancer. Do you know that or not? You can solve a financial problem, you cannot solve cancer. You go and ask somebody who's in the hospital who's got cancer. Go to Institute Cancer Nagara. You ask the guy, my friend, you got cancer. Eh? I want to ask you, I got financial problem, you got cancer. Can we change or not? I take over your cancer because he's multi-millionaire, but got cancer. You are very poor. Um, you know what I mean? You're very poor. So now you want money, but you are, you're healthy. So you want to ask him, it's okay. I want your, uh, you know, you, you million dollars, but I don't mind having cancer. You know what happens or not? Let me ask you something. Would you prefer cancer or money? Let me tell you, of course, you want to be healthy and with money. La. But always remember this. As long as you're healthy, your brain is working, you can find money. Can you imagine if you got cancer? You know you're going to die. So every day, get up in the morning and say, oh my God, I'm alive and healthy. My God, I'm alive and healthy. My God, I'm alive. You know what most of you do when you get up in the morning? When you get up early, oh my God, must get up. Oh my God, must get up. One day God will say, no need to get up. Yeah, finish. You know what I meant? Please be careful what you say to the universe. Every day, oh my God, must get up. Oh my God. Everything you say is very powerful. Huh? Financial situation. You know why people have financial problems? Now? Let me tell you why. When you ask people, how are you? What do people say? Okay, la. You know what that means, Anna? Tachukobla. How are you? Surviving. How are you? So so. How are you? Chukok makan. How are you? Chukok makan. How are you? Listen, in our Muslim friends will tell you in the Quran is written there when you say something 40 times, it's a doa. When you say something 40 times, it's a doa. You know, when people ask you, how are you? You say, chukok uh, makan. How many times? 400 times in a day. How are you? Bro. How are you? Bro. 400 times in a day. When you say it 400 times, of course, it, it is it's a definite door. You're going to be broke for the rest of your life. Starting today, when people ask you, how are you? You say, fantastic. How are you? Very blessed. How are you? Very grateful. Just say this for the next three weeks. You just watch. Huh? Money will come. You'll be healthier. You'll be happier. Good relations will come. Very powerful what you say. One last question uh, about example. Who are you married to? You know why I ask this question? Now, many of you don't realize. Huh? You remember number three in my example is people you don't like. Do you know a lot of people get married to people you don't like? A lot of people. I remember doing a program in, in Penang for Maybank. And this young lady told me, Mr. Kati, you're very right. La. Last time, Mr. Kati, I don't like my branch manager. I'm an assistant branch manager. I don't like my branch manager. My, my branch manager's name is Xiao, you know. In Chinese, Xiao means Gilala. Anyway, his name is Xiao, Mr. Kati. Eh? I don't like my branch manager, Mr. Kati. So I used to go and complain to my mother. I hit him. I hit him. My mother said, you better be careful. Don't keep saying like that. You... And then you know what happened now, Mr. Kati? Today, I miss a Xiao. Not only that, I got two little Xiaos. You see? And I can go on and on. I met a young lady. She came from my class. And then um, she was talking. She said, two now, Mr. Kati. I said, why? And then she stood up. And then I realized she's very tall. She's six feet. And she said, Mr. Kati, as you can see, I'm an ass to this. I'm six feet tall. Do you know or not? Because I'm six feet, eh, I don't like short guys. Because, you know, I don't like short guys. Huh? 
because I don't want to see short people because I'm so tall, ma, I don't want to look down on people, ma. But Mr. Kati, all my friends are short, la, Mr. Kati. My working colleagues, many of them are short. Wherever I go, I find, I attract a lot of the short guys. Huh? I, oh, now I realize, because I, I hate them, I attract them. I asked her, I said, are you married a girl? She said, yeah, yeah, I'm married. I said, where's your husband? Then she looked down and said that. He got up, he's five feet four. <laughs> I tell you, I got stories in the... For those of you who are into arranged marriage, let me tell you a little true story. I had a lady who came from India for my program. And um, she, she, you know, in India, they do arranged marriage, right? So what happened was this girl got married and then she, she not married, sorry. When she was, um, her mom was looking for a bridegroom. Huh? So mom will come and show a picture to her. Let me Shruti. La. Shruti, can you choose your husband or not? So Shruti will look at the picture. Then finally told the mother, mom, listen, eh? I don't mind anybody like you choose la, but make sure you got hair because I hate bald guys. You I cannot stand bald guys. Eh? Make sure you got hair. So one day the mother came and showed one picture and then she looked at the person. He works for Infosys. Got hair. She said, okay, ma, no problem. So they got married. Okay, now that married, eh? first night. Now we are together, first night. So as we were together, that guy told uh, Shurti, Shurti, <clears throat> Shurti, I want to tell you something. Eh? So Shurti said, hey, why? You got girlfriend, eh? You are previously married. Huh? What happened? What happened? No, 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 no. He said, then what is the problem? What is it you want to tell me? He said, sorry, eh, Shorty, I didn't tell you. And then, ta-da! He took off the week and showed her that he was bald. And he said, you know what? She hated bald guy. She got married to a bald guy. So you see how powerful love attraction is, my friend. Yeah? So, why is it that powerful? And I'm going to show you some examples. Do you know our body is 70% water? Do you know our body is 70% water? Okay? And... We have 70 trillion cells in our body. Each cell has got energy and can listen to your words, your thoughts, and your feelings. And that's the reason why a lot of you don't realize whatever you think will come through. Whatever you think, one side of it is your subconscious brain. When it believes it, it goes into your entire body. Every cell will listen to you. And I want to show you some examples here. Okay. Uh, Dr. Emoto, I don't know how many of you heard of Dr. Emoto. He's from Japan. What he did was he took water crystals, he, he actually froze them, and then he looked under the microscope, and he realized water crystals were affected by emotion, words, and thoughts. Okay, so he did the research. For example, he took water from a river, and they freeze the water and looked under the microscope, it looked very dirty. Water crystals, right? Very dirty. Now, what they also did was they took water crystal from a river, which is dirty, they did prayers, you know, as you know, if you are, you know, whether you are a Hindu, whether you are a Christian, whether you are a Muslim, whatever, they will always have I Zam Zam or they have holy water, you know, where they pray on the water. Because when you pray, like for example, I, whenever I take water, whenever I drink water, whatever, I always say, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, because I, that's naturally I'll say, I'll tell you why later. But when you pray over the water, water has got energy and what happens is, Please, please, and please mute yourself. Please mute yourself, whoever it is. Thank you. So when you when you when you when you listen to um, sorry when you read the pray, uh, prayers, uh, the water will change. So this is what happened. So they took water from a Japanese river. They got monks to pray, and then they put the freeze it and look under the under the microscope. Look at how beautiful the water is. So the moment you pray to water, water molecule changes. Now our body. 70% is water. So here they took water. They put the word outside the water in a container. They put the word, you make me sick, I'll kill you. It looked like that. Then they also took a container of water. They put the word, I love you. I appreciate you. It looks like this. Look at the beauty. Very powerful. So if you're standing in front of a mirror and you said, I love myself, your every cell will, will be excited. If you're standing in front of a uh, mirror and you say, oh, I'm such an idiot, every cell will suffocate. You need to understand, huh? That's why I said God is not defeating anybody. You're only defeating yourself. Now, the word Adolf Hitler and dirty, what does it mean? Negative kind. Now look at the water. On the other hand, what does the word thank you and beautiful mean? Beautiful. Whenever you say thank you, thank you, thank you. You like people when you say thank you again. Like, for example, you let somebody, um, you know, when you're driving, somebody put a signal, you let them and they wave, you, you're very happy. When somebody says, oh, you're so beautiful, you're very happy. See, when you say this, our entire body, because we've got all the, 75 trillion cells get affected. And when the cells get affected, means when they become beautiful, your entire body becomes healthy. That's why they say you look, you look healthy. You look healthy because you're happy. So when you're happy, your entire body um, rejoices. Yeah. So 
I, I, um, there are people who did some experiments. These are people who came from my program. This lady, she cooked rice. She put in two containers. Uh, she's a Chinese lady. She wrote one, one container. She wrote what I love you. She wrote in Chinese because she thought maybe the rice can only understand Chinese. Lah. And the other one, she put I hate you, I'll kill you. And the side there, she wrote in Chinese. Lah. And three weeks later, look at how the rice looks like. The one says, I love you, look like this. The one says, I hate you, look like Now, she put both of them in the fridge, you know. She took out three weeks later. The only difference is one had the word, I hate you, I'll kill you. One had the word, I love you. Look at this one. Okay. Look at this one. Eh? Again, they cook rice. They put the word, I hate you, one container. I love you, one container. Close it, kept in the fridge. You can see the condensation of water because they took out from the fridge, right? Look at the one that says, I hate you. Look at this. Two, two slices of bread. They put into a container. One, they put, I hate you, I love you. They put into a fridge or they keep anywhere. One week, two weeks later, they take out. Look at the difference. This lady cooked rice. One, she put sayang kamu, terima kasih sayang. One, they put there sayang benci kamu. And this is like some of you, when you tell your, talk about your boss, this is what you say, isn't it? Sayang kamu, sayang benci kamu. Kan? So exactly three weeks, four weeks later, when they take out from the fridge, look at it. See, both were kept in the fridge, but you know what happened or not? Look at the one that says sayang benci. See, the, the bread, or the rice is full of water, right? Because it's cooked with water again. So it understands the words, you know. Now, three weeks ago, I started an eight weeks program in FB. And all of you can go to my FB. Later, I'll give you the ID, Katigesis Willingham. You can go, all the details are there. You can join in the program. Of course, there's a payment for the program. Eh? You can go and you can start. So when I started the program eight weeks ago, it's eight weeks. And now this week is the module four. So the last three modules, even though I'm finished, but the video recordings are available for the last three weeks. Eh? So whatever I'm teaching you in the one and a half, and you know, one and a half hours today, I put it in eight weeks. So I can give you a lot of activities and access. So then in eight weeks time, you can now really become a millionaire within the one or two years time because I teach you step by step what to do become a millionaire. Anyway, so during the eight weeks, I get the same test to some of my participants. This is the result. So one lady, she took rice and put it. This is all happened in the last month, this month, eh? July. Eh? You see? So she wrote the word, I hate you and I'm going to kill you. Look at that, 10th of July. Eh? And then she put here, I, I love you, I hate you. You're important to me, 10th of July. Exactly one week later, look at the one that says, I hate you. Okay? This person, uh, 18 July, took two, loaves, uh, two slices of bread. One, you put, I love you, you're important to me. One put, I hate you, I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to kill you. Exactly one week later, on the 24th of July, the one, I hate you, already got spots. You know what? And then on the 26th of July, which is two days ago, where the one says, I hate you, look at how many spots are there. My friend, listen, it's the same bread. The only difference is what. So can you imagine, what are you telling yourself every day? That's why they say, if you look at a mirror every day and you say, I love myself, I love myself, I am fantastic. You will become so successful in life. But every time you say, oh my God, I'm so stupid. Oh my God, I'm an idiot. Or some of you call your children, uh, Monye, Anna, Setan. My God, you know how much of damage you're doing to your children? Anna? I mean, you call them Anna, Monye, Anna, Setan. You must remember you are the uh, Bapa or uh, Ibu. Gan. That's the first thing you must remember. But when you tell them that your children's cells are listening, my God, you know what kind of damage will happen? Ah, look at this one. Look at this one. Look, see, I hate you and I'm going to kill you. Uh, I love you. This is only one week. This is a guy, you know, Biswa, who did this for me. Just one week, you know, he came for my program because he only joined me in module two. He just did for one week and look at the difference. The word I hate you and look at it. So the words are very powerful. So if you tell yourself, I'm going to be successful. I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to be, you no, know, how are you? Fantastic. How are you? Incredible. Everything will change. My God, listen, we are Malaysian. Malaysia is a beautiful country. You need to understand that we are alive. You're not born in some country where so much of problems are going on. But so let's get up every morning and say, thank God I'm alive and understand that you have a soul within you. You've got a subconscious brain, you've got a superconscious brain. If you know how to program it, your entire life will change. So stop blaming other people. Stop blaming your boss. Stop blaming your parents. Stop blaming other people. You can change your life. You know, you're here listening to me today. That means you can change your life. But it's up to you. Yeah. Another person. Again, bread. I hate you. Please die. Look at the black spots. I love you. This is a doctor. She's actually Dr. Shilati. She, she actually did this uh, program. She's a doctor. She says, you know what, Kathy, I, I'm, so, I'm shocked with what you're telling me. Let me try. And she tried this. She tells me, my God, Kathy, I didn't know this. 
Look at this one. Now, obviously, you can see I love you also has got spots. But look at the one that says I, can, I will. This is only how many days? Eight days. Ah, this is 20th of July. I think this is on the Vishwa day. Eh? 20th of July. And today is 28th of July. Eight days later. Look at the one that says I hate you. And look at the entire braid is gone. Anyway, enough. Oh, go one more. Sorry. Uh, 9th of July, two, two slices. 22nd of July, look at the one. So all of you can do this. If you join my uh, program on Facebook, uh, I will actually bring you through. So now the question is this. You know, I say the water is very powerful. You ask me, is it very powerful? Well, I want to give you an example. Do you know that you can kill the energy in the water by microwaving? Microwave is very bad for your body. Yeah? So when you microwave water, the entire cell will die. Everything will die. So they did an experiment. They took two plants. One, they pour microwave water. One, they pour mineral water, purified water, mineral water. Day one, both look healthy. Look at day nine. The one that you pour microwave water is already dead. The one you pour purified water is still flowing. Now, if you eat microwave food, you are in danger. I'm telling you today. But more importantly, you need to understand that the energy can be killed if you heat it up. That's what this is all about. Yeah. So I'm going to show you a video. Well, I'm taking some bit of water. Within every DNA, every cell in your body listens to every word and thought. I repeat, within your DNA, every cell in your body listens to every word and thought. The video I'm going to show you now is about a guy who met an airplane accident, and the doctor said you will be a vegetable for the rest of your life. He said it doesn't matter what other people think, what matters is what I think. Listen to this and watch this video. Well, my story begins on March the 10th, 1981. It really changed my whole life. It was a day I'll never forget. I crashed an airplane. I ended up in the hospital completely paralyzed. My spinal cord was crushed, I broke the first and second cervical vertebrae, my swollen reflex was destroyed, I couldn't eat or drink, my diaphragm was destroyed, I couldn't breathe, all I could do was blink my eyes. The doctors of course said all my life I'd be a vegetable, all I'd do is blink my eyes the rest of my life. That's a picture they saw of me, but it didn't matter what they thought. The main thing was what I thought. I pictured myself being a normal person again, walking out of that hospital. The only thing I had to work with in the hospital was my mind. And once you have your mind, you can put things back together again. I was hooked to a respirator and they said I'd never breathe on my own again because my diaphragm was destroyed. But this little voice kept saying to me, breathe deep, breathe deep. Finally I was weaned from it. They were at a loss for an explanation. See, I could not afford to allow anything to come in my mind that would distract me from my goal and from my vision. Well, I set a goal to walk out of the hospital on Christmas. That was my goal. months later I walked out of the hospital on my own two feet and said it couldn't be done. That's a day I will never forget. For for people that are sitting out there right now watching this program that are hurting, if I wanted to sum up my life and sum up uh, for people what they can do in life, I would sum it up this way in six words. Man becomes what he thinks about. That? He said that man becomes what he thinks about. And that's very powerful because he said very clearly, the doctor said you'll be a vegetable for the rest of your life. But he said it does not matter what other people think. What matters is 
this is what I think. And he said, as long as I've got a brain and a subconscious mind that works, I can actually walk out of the hospital. So you did visualization, you wrote affirmations, and you walked out of the hospital. And I'm telling you today, my friends, starting from today, you can change your life. 2021, forget about COVID. 2021, you could be successful in your career, relationship, you could get married, you could have kids, you could be a millionaire in the next couple of years. But you need to decide to change the way you think. You need to decide the powers within you. I'll show you how. I'll show you how. So how did we program ourselves to be negative or positive? Okay, let me, so I want to give you an example of how we do this, yeah? So um, a lot of people don't realize, they, they don't realize how they program. So I want to share with this with you. So I want to do an exercise with all of you. How many of you here are stupid in math? Basically, you know, math is a bad subject. Can you please indicate? I want to just see whether there are people here. That means, you know, your math is not a good subject. Lah. Okay. Uh, you know, okay, I've got, I've got people already indicating they're stupid in maths. Thank you for admitting, yeah. Um, the, so a lot of people say, oh, I'm, I'm not good in maths, and I'm stupid in maths, and so on and so forth. But, but I, want you, I want you to know something, yeah. I want you to know something. This is, this is not possible. It, it's not possible. It's not possible for you to be stupid because you have programmed yourself to be stupid. I'll tell you why, okay. I already told you just now, it's nothing to do with your father, mother, nothing. Eh? The one is rubbish, right? Okay, I'll tell you why. Okay, now, there are 90 of you watching me today, but there are about 10 of you, maybe you will put up your hand and say you're stupid in maths. But you see, I want to give you some facts first. Eh? All our brains are the same, which is 1.3 kg. Everybody, even you're stupid in maths or clever in maths, 1.3 kg, so our brain is the same. Okay. Number two, all of us use only about 2% of the brains. I don't know, eh? maybe you think you use 100%, sorry lah. When you learn something new, yes, we use your brain. For example, when you first time you learn to drive the car, yeah, you need to know how to say it, how to put the bell. Sometimes you sit so close, you're staring, the steering will touch your tummy. You sit close because you have to know how to drive. First time you want to use a chopstick, yeah, you learn. But you do know today you don't think, you just use chopstick. Similarly, when you drive a car, you get into the car, start the engine, put the seat back, handphone, you reach home already. So obviously, first time you use the brain, then it's programmed already. So that's why we all use about 2% of the brain. And number three, we have 86 billion neurons. Okay. This is according to my Dr. Ezra, who recently came on my program. He said, confirm, confirm 86 billion. I said, okay, 86 billion. Now. Okay. Now 86 billion. Neurons. Now, so the next time when people say, hey, why are you so stupid? You must tell them. And you say, hello, hello, hello. I'm not stupid. Okay. I've got 86 billion neurons. You know that or not? I just don't know how to use it, but I have the neurons, you know. That's exactly what it is. Okay. So how is it, how is it that some people say they are stupid? How? I'll tell you why. You see, some of you put up your hand, like Jacob put up the hand and said he's stupid in maths. Actually, what happened was very simple. Normally, when it comes to maths, normally you're tested in maths when you're in standard one, standard two, in timetable. So when Jacob was in standard two, the teacher asked, called him and asked him, Jacob, six times two, how many timetable two? Lah? So Jacob never studied. So he said six times to eight teacher. Teacher says stupid. So what happens is it goes to his conscious brain. He's thinking, am I stupid or not? But all the friends can answer. Then he goes to his subconscious brain. And, oh, maybe I'm stupid. But it's not registered permanently because he's not sure. Then teacher say, Jacob, you better go and study. Tomorrow I'm going to ask you. Okay. But you know, standard two, where you go study, right? Jacob went and climbed the coconut tree, steal mango, play Kanda County, never study. Next day he goes to school, teacher asks him. Um, seven times two, how many? Jacob says, 72 teacher. Teacher says, stupid, stand on the chair. Now, second time, huh, the word stupid comes. Now, you stand on the chair. When you stand on the chair, what do all your friends say? All your friends laugh at you. Yeah, hey, yeah, Jacob, stupid. Yeah, hey, yeah, Jacob. So, you say, oh my God, I must be really stupid now. Then, the teacher says this. You better go and practice your time two tab uh, ta ta table two. Jacob, otherwise, you cannot answer. I'm going to send you to the headmaster. Now, Jacob is very scared. So, he goes home and he practices, you know. One times two, three times two, eight times two, nine. We got timetable two, lah. Nine times two, ten. I practice. Then his father sees him, and father says, "Hey, what are you doing there?" He says, "I'm practicing my timetable two. And then father says, "Come, come, come. I want to ask you." So he comes. Father asks uh, Jacob, "Jacob, okay, two times nine, how many?" Alama, because Jacob studied nine times two. You know, when you're small, you cannot tell the difference. Right? He studied timetable two, two times nine. Uh, sorry, nine times two. Father asks him two times nine. You clear, rule. So you said twenty-nine. Father said. Stupid, but you see, when father says stupid, father says stupid in capital letters. S T U because father knows you best. 
whatever the father mother says it goes into your brain the father says oh my god why are you so stupid and then a lot of parents do this stupid mistake a lot of parents say how come you're so stupid compared to your brothers and sisters jang 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 program how come you're so stupid compared to your cousins and all some sometimes sometimes the father will say something like jacob you know why you're stupid or not because you got your mother's brain and you see no wonder i'm stupid i got my mother's brain and that's it from that day onwards jacob has believed he has got his mother's dna and because mother is stupid in man he is stupid in man finish see how we program ourselves so all this programming by your parents programming by your teachers all this is utter rubbish okay so you now need to know today that you can reprogram yourself and that's what i'm going to tell the next half an hour to teach you okay okay three step formula for deliberate so i'm going to share with you three formulas okay three step formula to how to deliberately get what you want in life okay are you ready so far if you have been listening to me never take paper pencil never write because you think you are memorized please get a paper and a pencil and write down what i'm going to share with you okay number 1 you need to know what you want you need to know your goals very important number 2 you need to give your desire attention you need to give your goal attention energy and focus so it comes to you number 3 then you must allow it to come into your life you cannot be doing a lot of dosa dosa sinful things or you won't come you know so you must allow it to come into your life so today i'm going to share with you how to do this thing okay let's go to the first one identify your desire so what you need to do is very simple my friends the universe will give you whatever you want but you need to have clarity so what i need you to do is write down five things you want okay all of you here you can just write down five things you want quickly do it if you are writing write down money okay one year from today how much money you want to have in the bank car what kind of car you want to have one year from today okay relationship what kind of relationship you want to have a career what kind of career you want to have business how big your business you want to have okay how much of sales or what level you want to be you know if you are in, in, in you know different different business industries what are the pins what are the levels so one year from today so very clearly write down five things okay how much money um what car what house or what business whatever or maybe even weight you know i want to be at this kilogram you know so much of weight or whatever okay you do that this is the first thing you do now once you've done that i need you to give attention to that whatever you're saying because this is what the book says remember earlier i told all of you my friends the science of getting rich okay this book by wallace wattles huh? science of getting rich wallace now any of you if you want this book uh, at the end of my talk today i will give you my uh, phone number and my email address you can whatsapp me and ask for the book i'll send you an e copy of the book eh? and you can start reading today so this book was written in 1910 i repeat 1910 110 years ago and this is what he says in page 49 in page 49 according to wallace wattel he says the picture of your desires held with faith and purpose okay very important eh? the picture of what you want i mean the five things you wrote just now right held with faith faith means you must believe it is going to come faith 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 must believe it will come if you don't believe it won't come and purpose purpose means you say i want 100000 for what good things you say i want to get married oh i want to get married but then she's married to somebody and then cannot laugh purpose wrong already uh, i want to make money so i can show off to people our purpose wrong already so of course your faith and purpose very important and then once you have got this picture of your desires and your faith and purpose is taken up by the universe when it goes to the universe yeah as this impression spread all things are set moving to realization and two things happen number one every living thing every inanimate thing and things yet uncreated are stirred towards bringing into being what you want i repeat huh? what it says is the moment you know what you want the universe will pick it up and every living thing every inanimate thing i mean not living yeah everything's uncreated will come together to make it happen for you oh power what a powerful statement not only that look at this the minds of people everywhere are influenced towards doing the things necessary to fulfilling your desires and they work for you unconsciously so if you were to write down about relationship you would write down about your manager and you have got good relationship his mind will be influenced to be able to have a good relationship with you assuming you are doing a good job huh you never do your work you expect him to be friendly sorry la because the purpose is wrong if you got a girl you like and you really love her and you want her to come towards you and she is single and she is also looking for somebody it will come purpose is good 
So all these are very important. So if any of you want this book, WhatsApp me at the end of this program, I will actually send you an e-copy. Yeah? Or talk to the person who invited you, because some of them already have the e-copy, they can send it to you, okay? Now, how do you give desire uh, attention? There are three things you can do. I'm gonna share with you one by one, eh? three things you can do, okay? First, you can do it by giving, writing affirmations every day. I'll tell you about affirmations shortly. You need to have a vision board with pictures of what you want. And number three, you need to do visualization. Let me go through one by one. Eh? So three ways how you give the attention. First one, affirmation. Affirmations are examples, something like this. I'm going to give you three examples, yeah? Something like this. I'm so excited and grateful that I have 250,000 in my Maybank account as of 31st of December, 2020. You see, very clear. Now, very important, all the affirmation must start with this word. I'm so happy, I'm so excited and grateful, I'm so happy and grateful, but it must be I am and followed by or whatever you want. I repeat, huh? I am by followed by what you want because the word I am is very powerful. So you cannot be I will, cannot be I want, cannot be I wish, double A. It must be I am so excited and grateful that I have 250,000 in my Maybank account as this day, or I'm happy and grateful that I am slim, trim, and healthy and weigh 60 kg. Or I'm so happy and grateful that I live in a fully paid 10,000 square feet bungalow in Tropicana. Replenishing. Now, my suggestion, because you need to write each one of these 16 times. Only then it will work for you. Eh? So sometimes you might need to combine them. Combine them may be like this. I'm so, I'm so excited and grateful that I have 250,000. I'm slim, trim, and healthy and weigh 60 kg. And... I live in a bungalow house in Tropicana as of for one day. I mean, you combine together together. Because what happens is, oh, sorry, let me show you for a job first. Eh? So for job will be something like this. I'm so excited. You see, always starts with I am. Eh? So excited and grateful that I have an excellent working relationship with my superiors and subordinates. Or I'm happy and grateful that I've exceeded my annual KPIs by more than 10%. Or for those of you in business, I'm very happy and grateful that I have achieved so much of sales. Um, I'm so happy and grateful I've reached this pin level. I'm so happy and grateful I've reached this target. Uh, or I'm so happy and grateful I've got 28 new clients and have achieved sales of more than 40 million. So you can say, I'm so happy and grateful that I know I've got 100 new customers and I've achieved this much of sales. Very, very important for you to understand that whatever you write down, 16 times a day will work. You know why? Because all affirmations you must write 16 times a day. Now, I would normally prefer one to three. That means three, because you write 16 times a day, because you have to write 16 times a day. If you've got too many, you will give up. So my suggestion is you take three affirmations, combine them. Again, if you need help, talk to the person who invited you today um, and maybe they can help you or WhatsApp me your affirmation. I'll look at it. I'll combine it for you and send it back to you so you can start writing or you can check with me whether your affirmation is correct or not. Because your affirmation, also, you cannot say things like negative words like, I want to pay my loans. I want to be debt free. Cannot debt free. Cannot why? Because you're focusing on debt. Cannot. Okay. So this is very important. And why is it powerful? And why is it writing six times? Let me show you. Eh? First of all, why the word I am is very important. Okay. Watch this video. Many times we use the power of I am against us. We don't realize how it's affecting our future. Here's the principle. What follows the I am will always come looking for you. When you say, I am so clumsy, clumsiness comes looking for you. I am so old, wrinkles come looking for you. I am so overweight, calories come looking for you. It's just like you're inviting them. Whatever you follow the I am with, you're handing it an invitation, opening the door, giving it permission to be in your life. Now the good news is, you get to choose what follows the I am. When you go through the day saying, I am blessed, blessings come looking for you. I am talented, talent comes looking for you. You may so not feel simple, a... Eh? Whatever follows I am will come looking for you. Okay, so I wanna give you some testimonial. This is Becky. Becky attended my program. She's a makeup artist. So she came for my program and after I told her, um, to the affirmation she should write. So she wrote this affirmation. I'm so happy and grateful that I'm finally a successful celebrity makeup artist. Before that, she was just a makeup artist, not a celebrity makeup artist. Eh? And then she sent me this picture. This is Becky with Chef One. Chef One is a celebrity. Becky with Sheila Majid. Sheila Majid is a celebrity. Uh, Harding was an actor uh, with, uh, with uh, Becky, celebrity. This is uh, Anna Olsen. Anna Olsen, I think most of you know. Uh, you know, I think it's big, big with Anna or... You know, uh, she's in uh, Food Channel and all, yeah? 
and this is Anna Olsen. So she was a, uh, what do you make up it for Anna Olsen? This is Abbas. Abbas is an actor from India. So basically, by writing the affirmation, a dreams came true. This is a lady who came for my program. Her name is um, Effie Lim. As you can see what she wrote there, she said, I'm grateful and excited that I'm promoted to senior manager in January 2018. Listen, eh? I'm grateful and excited. I'm promoted to senior manager in January 2018. She came for my class in August 2017. Eh? August 2017, she wrote it. She must be, by January 18, uh, she must be senior manager. Then she sent me this. Can you see this? This is Effie Lim. If you can read that, that it says here, Dear leaders, I'm pleased to announce that Miss um, Ephilim is our new senior manager for sales and marketing. And you look at the date right on top of the screen. You can see you and below the date, you, you, you can see the date is 11th of January. Remember what she said? I want to be a senior manager in January. On the 11th of January, she was promoted as senior manager. What she did? She wrote the affirmation 16 times a day. Okay. This gentleman came to my class. He says here, uh, I attended your courses, Mr. Karti. Uh, one of the activities was to write down how much I want to earn. And, you know, I was earning at 20,000. I wanted to earn 35,000 ringgit a month. So it was quite challenging writing the affirmation because I write 16 times a day, right? So he wrote down, you know, I am receiving uh, 35,000 every sixth of the month, you know, and he started writing this every day. Now he did it for 30 days, continued and continued. You know what? He sent me this message by saying, Mr. Karti, just to inform that my account today was credited by 35,500. Wow, hey, look at that. Just by writing this, you can change it. Yeah? This gentleman, uh, Nason, came from my program. He's a prison warden. As you can see, the affirmation he wrote down. Huh? He says, I am very excited and grateful that I have a blue BMW 330 uh, Sports M Sport model. Huh? 330 AE M Sport model by this day. Look at Nason with his BMW 330 E Sports model. This lady came to my class. She said last December, Mr. Karti, this was just last year before NCO. Eh? She came in December last year. She said, last year, December, I attended your first class of a law of attraction. And you told me I started to write. Okay. And then see what she wrote. Eh? She wrote down, I'm so happy and grateful that I, I'm so happy and thankful that I got a job near my house with 2,500 salary by February 2020. Can you see that? By February 2020. 2005 by February 2020. Eh? Look at what happened. Then she sent me this uh, letter of offer from the company. Uh, she got the offer on the and says, please join us by before the 16th, please tell us. And look at what he says here. Starting total gross salary, 2,500. She was so upset. She texted me and said, oh, Mr. Kati, I should have put more than 2,500. I didn't know it would come through, you know. My God, my friends, I've got so many testimonies like this. Always come through. The second thing you got to do is vision board. Vision board is very easy, lah, huh? Basically, it's a pictures of what you want. Like, you know, your, your car, your house, whatever you want. Not only the three things I told you just now. Anything like, you know, you want, uh, you can put an ATM statement. Uh, you, can put, you can put check, you know, pay to you how much money. Bank statement, how much money you have in your account. Date, S&P agreement about the houses you have bought. Anything you can do. So it's something like this, okay? You can put um, pictures, you know, like this particular guy. You know, how fit you want to be spiritually, money, car, house. This guy, again... Uh, his vision board, he wants to get married, he wants to have this car, or this lady rather, uh, cars that she wants to have, the uh, money she wants to have. Can you see that? I'm happy and grateful. I got one million. These are vision board. So vision board are basically, you can do e-book, e-vision board on your laptop or something, or you can do it on your wall, okay? Vision board. Okay? This is another guy. His name is Jayanta. He's an insurance agent. This is his vision board. As you can see, vision board where he's got number of agents, his car, you know, he's, um, you know, he's slim trim, he's 70 kg, he's cottage, you know, whatever, right, right? So these are people who put in vision. So I have some testimonials. This lady came from my program. She's a medical doctor. Her name is Dr. Priscilla Ui. She came, as you can see, that's a vision board. And as you can see, the arrow shows eyesight, right? Because Dr. Priscilla actually wears glasses, but she's a medical doctor. So why she put the eyes is because she wanted to make sure the eyesight improves. So she put it there. And what happened is apparently a couple of uh, weeks later, she lost her glasses. So when she got, lost her glasses, she went to check uh, uh, power. Huh? So this is probably a couple of weeks after she lost her glasses. She went away, as you can see. I just went to check my eye power because I lost my glasses. My eyesight actually improved on both sides. I think it's because of law attraction. She's a medical doctor. She cannot believe that eyesight has actually improved just because she put her eyes 
on the vision board. See, whatever you put on the vision board comes true. This lady, uh, Reka, well, she, she did the vision board, as you can see. Can you see there are three pieces of jewelry that is there? One is a necklace, one is a earring, one is a necklace, another necklace can. So she put this on a vision board. Now, look what happened, eh? She says here, yeah, a million thanks to you, sir. I applied the secret. I attended your law of chain program. In the past three months, continuously, I bought three necklaces, pendant for my mother, and I spent almost 4,500 ringgit for a necklace and a pendant. As you can see, she shows about them wearing it because before that she had a lot of financial issues. All of a sudden, after she started to do the vision board, she started with affirmation, money started to come in. Not only that, as you can see, uh, the earring, you know, see, she says, yeah, now I can move, remove the earring picture because as you can see, the picture of the earring is uh, in, the, in the vision board. Now she's bought an exact earring. You see, my friend, it always comes true. The third one is visualization. Visualization is basically, uh, you need to visualize what is it that you want and how does it work is very simple. Every day, if you already have your vision board with all the pictures, what you need to do is look at the pictures in your vision board, sit down one corner in the morning, twice a day you must do, yeah? Uh, close your eyes and visualize. Visualize driving the car, visualize having the money, visualize traveling around the world, visualize living in the house at your dream house, visualize your boss giving you promotion, visualize you're getting bonuses, Visualize your business is growing. Visualize you have reached the pin level or the higher level that you wanted to in your business and all. Now I have been teaching this to people from the MLM business in Mway. I've been teaching people in the insurance industry. I've been teaching people in the unit trust industry. Many, many, many of them have been promoted, reached the level, many, many of them because they started to do this exercise as a business. So I know it works. You need to do it as well. Huh? Powerful when you're very clear, not just a big car, exactly what model, what color, how does the seat look like? What is the interior house? Not just a big house. What is in the house? Huh? That kind of things. This lady came from my class. Her name is Chitra. She works in a bank. She said for 17 years, I work in a bank. I didn't have anything, not even an award. So I asked her to do visualization. She did the visualization. A month later, the HR called her and gave an employee award. So she sent the picture. This is a lady who has two daughters who are not doing very well in maths. You see, you can see here my... They always say maths is difficult and they hate the class. So what this lady did was she, she taught the two girls, her two daughters, how to visualize that they like maths. For example, visualize they enjoy maths, visualize they're doing well in maths. About a week later, apparently she was seeing them do maths. So she asked them, oh, how come you all are very happy to do maths now? And they say, oh, mom, now we find maths is very easy. We enjoy doing it. And our teacher praises us for doing it. So if you've got children, who keep telling you, I don't like this, I don't like, tell the children to imagine the positives, imagine doing well, imagine the exam result, imagine straight A's, everything will come true. This lady applied for a tuition license uh, with, a, with a government, with, a, with one of the government, or Jabatan Pendidikan in October. She said people, they, she didn't get anything, no news, nothing. Then she came for my program. After that, she started to visualize every day that the license had been approved, license had been And then she said, two weeks later, she got a call and the person said, your, your license had been approved, okay? Uh, this gentleman came to my class. He says, here, yeah, I'd like to share with you, Mr. Kathy. In 2017, I'm 38 years old. I wanted to buy a condominium. I wanted to resign my job and become a full-time consultant with private public mutual. I wanted to buy a car. Then this is in 2017, eh? Now he sent me this. Uh, last year, end of last year, in 2019, he has already bought his condo, he's already left his job and became a public mission consultant, and he's bought a Proton uh, X70, which is under 27,000. And you see what he says. All this happened in 19, 2019, exactly the way he wanted it. And how did he do it? He says, I focus on the habit of um, a law of attraction and visualization, visualization, visualization. My suggestion is do all, uh, write your desire, then do the affirmation, do the vision board, and do the visualization. Okay, now I want to finish off the talk today. I've got 15 minutes, and I want to finish up the talk to you to talk to you about the most important thing, which is allowing it to happen. This is very important, my friend. When you start doing your work, a lot of people don't allow it to happen. Uh, give me an example of allowing it to happen. Huh? Okay, you buy a new handphone. Okay, you buy a new handphone. Eh? Brand new iPhone, lah. So you bought a handphone, really good. And the, the guy told you it's a good phone. You try to make a call, you make a call, and everything good. 
Then what happened? You went inside the lift and you made a phone call, couldn't go through. And you're so upset because the call didn't go through. You quickly break the phone and say, stupid phone. How come the call never go through? Now, the thing is, why didn't it go through? Because you were inside the lift. There was no reception. There was no network. I repeat, no reception, no network. Now, you are doing your affirmation. You are doing the visualization. You are doing everything, right? Question, is the universe receiving your affirmation, your vision board, visualization? Is there a network between your soul and the universe? Is there a connection or not? Are you able to allow it to happen or not? I'm going to tell you three things you got to do today to make it happen. But I need you to know why I'm telling you. I'll give you another example. For example, you send a message to somebody, a WhatsApp message to somebody. One tick, what does it mean? Message has gone across, but they have not received it. Okay? So now, you write an affirmation, you do a vision board, you do all those things, right? So now you've told the universe already. So the universe, it goes in. But the universe have not received it. Ah, why? Number two, two ticks, black ticks, which means the person has received the message. Maybe the universe also received it. But God is not reading a message. The universe is not reading because two black ticks, no blue ticks. Only when there's two blue ticks. That means message gone, received, and read. Once the universe reads your message, it will then start giving it to you. That is called allowing it to happen. Okay, how does it happen? So the speed of which law of attraction manifests, manifests your desire is in the direct proportion how much you are allowing. And allowing is the absence of negative vibration or doubt. You cannot have any vib negative vibration and cannot have doubt. So you got to be very careful who you mix with, who you talk to, all those things, yeah? But I will give you three tools that will allow you to become um, making sure your message goes through, received by the universe, and also the universe reads it. And three tools. First tool, every day record whatever you're grateful for. When the moment you get up, so you need two exercise books. One exercise book, write your affirmation 16 times a day, every day. Next, uh, next one. Huh? By the way, you, when you sit down, you must write for 16 times. Huh? Later, I'm going to open up for question and answer. If you go question and answer, then I will answer your question. But at the moment, I'm telling you, write down the affirmation 16 times a day. Okay. Uh, so the other one exercise book is for you to write whatever you're grateful. So get up in the morning every day and write down. Or if you don't want to write down, download an uh, app from your app store on gratitude every day. Record down whatever you're grateful. What are you grateful for? I'm healthy. I'm alive. I've got a family. I've got a job. I've got a salary. I live in Malaysia peaceful country, I've got food, I've got a roof over my head, you know, I've got clothes to wear. Be thankful, my friend, because the universe is so upset with you because you are not thankful. Bungus. Can you switch? Okay, so you need to write down whatever you're thankful for. Please write down whatever you're thankful for every day because you need to know that the universe will only look at your message because you are a grateful person, because you're a thankful person. So start showing it to the universe. So starting from tomorrow, start writing. In fact, tonight, before you sleep, write down what you're thankful for. Number two, tool number two, eh? Tool number two, okay, tool number two is like this, eh? Do things that gets you blessings from others on a daily basis. Do things, okay? Do things. That means, eh? Maybe if you're buying food, buy extra food for your security guard. Uh, maybe buy, if you cook food, cook extra food for your neighbors. Uh, feed the bird, feed the cat, feed the, you know, call your mother, ask her whether she's eaten or not, uh, say good things to people, greet people, hold the lift for people, do good things to get blessing from. Don't do it because you want blessing, but just be a good human being. Okay? At the same time, avoid unnecessary curses. Park your car properly. Park your car properly. Don't park in a way other people cannot park. People curse you. Don't do double parking. You know, my friends, can you imagine you write affirmation 16 times a day? Oh, I'm, I, I'm, you know, I'm so happy and grateful. I'm driving this car. I'm so happy and grateful. Then you park your car, double parking, leave it and go and makan and come. 100 people curse you already. Can you imagine you write affirmation 100 times, sorry, 16 times, 100 people curse you already. So you go to a shopping center, look for parking. Don't just park until other people must squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Don't park at places where you shouldn't park because people curse you. When you're driving your car, don't say things like, they pay road tax, I pay road tax, I don't care. People will curse you. And when people curse you, your luck goes down. When people curse you, the universe will stop your blessing. When people curse you, you might think, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. But you know what? The universe is watching you. God is watching you. 
I need you to understand this. Please be a good human being. Because your soul is connected to other people's soul. When 100 souls curse you, I'm telling you today, your luck is gone. So you, it is so important for you to understand that you really, really need to take care of this. So do things that get you blessings and avoid things that gives you unnecessary curses. When you get lots of blessings from people, even like I say, you don't like human beings. Like I say, you feed the birds, feed the cat, feed the fishes, feed whatever. And the souls will bless you. You put, put a bit of food, rice for the pigeons. You put a bit of uh, food outside for the ants to eat. You get blessings. But remember both. Today onwards, park car properly, drive properly, do all the right things. Why? Because you know you want to have good things in life. Be a good human being. And the last one I want to tell you, which is the most important tool of the three, all three are important, la, is something called Ho'oponopono. Now, Ho'oponopono is very important for you to cleanse your thoughts, negative thoughts. So remember I told you, we have a subconscious mind which has been programmed with a lot of negativity, which is maybe your teachers told you this. Like remember Jacob, some of the stupid in maths, he's already programmed there. Maybe people told you, you know, until the age of 40, you won't be rich. Or maybe people have told you, you're good for nothing. You know, sometimes people will call you all kind of names. You know, Indians, they call other people Sunny and whatever name. So sometimes you have put these negative things. Sometimes it's your karma. If you believe in past life, maybe it's a past life karma. But you and I don't know what was our karma. karma. Maybe in this life, like my Muslim friends, you don't believe in past life. Some of my Christian friends, you don't believe in past life. Maybe from the time you're born until today, there could be negative things you've done. Maybe you're double parking or whatever you've done. Maybe all this. So you have to cleanse it. Right? Now, how do you cleanse it? Okay, you cleanse it by doing this thing called Ho'oponopono. Now, first of all, if you Google the word Ho'oponopono, it's a Hawaiian word that says to correct an error. I repeat that. Eh? The word Ho'oponopono means Correct an error. That means you're correcting any mistakes you've done in your life. That's what it means. Correcting your karma, correcting your error. And how do you do that? You do it by saying these four sentences. I love you. I'm sorry. Please come forgive me. Thank you. Who do you say this to? You say it to the universe. You say it to God. If you believe uh, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. You believe in Allah, Ya Allah. If you believe in Murga, Lord Murga. If you believe in Buddha, Lord Buddha. Anybody, but you're not telling this to other people. You are telling this to the universe, God. And you say, God, I love you. I'm sorry. So when you keep telling God or you keep telling the universe, you, you can just say, oh, dear universe. No need to believe in God. You can say, dear universe. Universe, I love you. What you're doing is you're cleansing your karma. When you cleanse your karma, oh my God, you will start seeing many, many good things that will come to you. So you're doing it to God or universe and you can do it 24 seven anytime. Even when you're lying down in bed, you can say, I love you. I'm sorry, please, thank you, yeah? Like I said, if you really, you know, I spend in my six, uh, eight weeks program, I spend one hour teaching only on Hoponopono. So if you really need more information, you probably need to get into my, my program. Eh? So go and check my Facebook account after this, yeah? If you want to know more. Now, how do you do this, eh? How do you do this, okay? So first thing you do is this, yeah? You can write your name and put your hand on top and do, God, I love you, I'm sorry. So you're cleansing your karma, okay? That's for example. Or for example, you have your boss and you, your boss always upsets you, uh, or boss and you are in bad terms. You write your boss's name and you can put your hand on top and say, boss, uh, not say boss, God, I love you. You say God, but you put your boss's uh, name, then you put it on now. Your relationship will improve because the karma will change. You and your husband having problem, you and your brother, sister having problem, you and your mother having problem. Write down the name, put your hand on top and say, God, I love you, I'm sorry. How many times you must say 20 times? So put your hand on top and say, I love you. I'm sorry, 20 times. When you say 20 times, you are already starting the cleansing process because you are now cleansing any negativity between you and your husband, between you and your boss, between you and your mother and uh, your, your family members. Or between, and when you cleanse it, or even customer, you're going to go and sell a product. They, they like your product, but they don't buy your product. Why? Because there's karma. But if you write your customer thing, put your hand on top and say, God, I love you. I'm sorry. You are cleansing it before you go and see them. 20 times, then you go and see church and jadi even the same. That's one example. Or we call it erase, erase the name. Erase the name means what you need to do is this. You need to write the person's name in pen. Pen, eh? pen eh? not pencil. Eh? Pen, eh? Write the name in a paper. Now the same paper you use every day. Same paper you use every day. Write it in pen. Okay, then what you do? Take a soft eraser. You know what's a soft, soft eraser? is the one you erase pencil writing. Eh? Take a soft eraser. Then let's say you've written your uh, uh, boss's name, your mother's name, or even your name or your wife's name or your ma, whatever. Whoever got a problem with you, you need the name and then what do? Because it's written in ink. 
because you're using soft eraser and erasing, the name won't go away. When you're erasing, you just say it 20 times. God, always remember, not to them. Eh? Already you don't like them, why you go and tell them I love you. Eh? Don't do that. Don't tell them, tell God, God, I love you. I'm sorry, thank you. I love you. you do 20 times. When you're doing it, what you're doing, symbolically, you're erasing the negativity between you and them. You can do either or. You can either do placing the hand or erasing. Okay? Now, since I don't have much time, I'm going to go quickly and tell you the testimonials I have for it. Okay? Um, so, like I said here, yeah, write down the names of the people you've got problem or creating problem or emotional setback for you or uh, hindrances for your progress. So anybody who is stopping you from, even sometimes when ladies, like during the MCO, I did this program, there are seven couples who came from my program and uh, five of them, they've been trying to conceive, never conceive. They did Ho'oponopono and out of the seven couple, five couples, actually the ladies conceived. This is because they have now cleansed the karma already. You understand or not? In fact, I want to tell you a very, very powerful story. I've already got the permission from the person. This lady, uh, she, she, during MCO, she spoke to me. She told me her husband is actually in, in, in Singapore on death sentence because of drug trafficking, which is not his fault. He actually did that because he wanted to get money for the daughter's uh, medical expenses. But unfortunately, he got caught because of his friends who manipulated him. And he got caught and he was sentenced to death. And his death sentence was supposed to be this in this year, end of this year. So she called me and asked me, Mr. Kathy, can I write my husband's name and do hope on no? So that at least he, you know, he doesn't suffer. At least he doesn't suffer. I said, Yeah, girl, go ahead and do. She she got two children. She already told the children, she said, I'm so sorry to tell you, my uh, appa won't come back home. You know, you know, he can't do anything because they already sentenced him to death. We will never be able to see him again. We have to live without him. She also has given up hope and she said, what to do? I'm going to be a single mother with my two kids because he's going to die in December. Now, she did this for about three weeks. Then all of a sudden, she got a call from a lawyer in Singapore who called up and said, um, Miss, I want to tell you something. I'm representing the United Nations uh, Law Tribunal Group and I would like to take up your husband's case pro bono, free of charge, because we feel your husband has been unjustly convicted. She said, okay. No problem. I mean, they want to do do la. She didn't have much hope, but she continued to hope on up on up. Now, a week later, five judges in Singapore sat together and discussed and decided to, uh, 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 what do you call it, commute their sentence and now change it back to prison sentence. And he was charged for 15 years of prison instead of death sentence. And since he has already served seven years of jail, he will be actually released from prison in the next one or two years. Can you imagine that? Eh? From that sentence has become, he's able to come and see the children. She's over, she, I met her recently at Curve, you know, and she was crying, you know. And she said, Mr. Kathy, I cannot believe this is happening. Look at, look at the power of open up. Okay? Like I told you, place your hand and do this. Of course, use a pencil or soft eraser and erase. So I want to do, give you some testimonials. Um, one person who came from my class said, uh, very good news, Mr. Kathy. Uh, my hubby has changed a lot. He's more understanding and nice talking to me. Thanks to you for teaching me the open up now. Uh, Miss S told me, Mr. Karthi, and uh, this is for people who owe you money. Eh? So Miss S, somebody owed her money. She wrote the person name Iris. The person gave back the 1,200. I also did this program in uh, Vietnam. Mr. Nguyen was from Vietnam. He said, I did open up for a client who owed me 25,000 for the last three years for services rendered. Two weeks later, after I started open up now, the boss's secretary called up. Now remember, two years, three years, they have not paid him. Eh? He just did open up on the boss's secretary called up and said, come and collect the check. And he actually got back the money. 20,000 US dollars just got back after he started. Because this is karma. This is your negative energy. Once you cleanse energy, things work for you. Yeah? Uh, this lady came from my class. Uh, Mr. Karthi, I'm a senior manager in a Japanese MNC. My vice president started to harass me sexually. Huh? Harass me first subtly and then more deliberately as days went by. I didn't know what to do because HR won't believe. Because he's a vice president and he, they won't believe. So I went to Mr. Kathy's class. He suggested I write my VP's name and erase while reciting Ho'oponopono. Amazing things happened. Three weeks later, my vice president gave 25 hour notice, left the company. I can't thank the university. Now, can you imagine that? Hey, please, huh? I'm not giving you ideas how to uh, erase and ask your boss to leave the company. If you put your boss's name and erase, if you are the problem, you will leave, not the boss will leave. Huh? This couple came from my class, Mr. and Mrs. Jiva. Um, they had a son, five years old, who was diagnosed of a growth in their chest area, believed to be cancerous. So they say, after your program, Mr. Kathy, we wrote our son's name and erased daily. We believe that we continuously ask God for forgiveness, our son will be saved. 20 
days later, we took our son to the hospital for the hospital for an operation to remove the growth. But the X-ray showed that our son was normal and there was no growth at all. And he was discharged. Look at how powerful this is. Huh? This lady came for my program. She actually had two groups of people, you know, 20 leaders who came for that. Sorry. She, this lady is a general manager of a unit trust company. She was doing a program. She had 20 people who came for the program. Okay. So what she did was, because they all have to call and fix appointments, she told them, create two lists of names, 10 names and another 10 names. Then she told them that from the first name, make phone calls. So they all made the phone call from A. Yeah? When they called, they managed to get one or two appointments to go and do unit trust plan. Then she told them, take out the other name list, put your hand on top, and then you do Hoponopono uh, 20 times, you know, do Hoponopono. So they did Hoponopono 20 times, and then they, you know what happened? For the second group, appointments with them. You just watch and see. Uh, please mute yourself. Guna Pushini, please mute yourself. Thank you. Um, uh, and you know, five to six appointments was actually confirmed, okay? Um, this gen lady came from my class. She said, I tried to sell my, my apartment when I met Mr. Kathy. Um, first of all, the price was not right or purchases were not getting a loan. After the class, I wrote affirmation 16 times that my house was sold. I also wrote the address of the house. I did Hoponopono. Within 10 days, I had three potential buyers and um, I sold my house. Uh, good day, Mr. Kathy. Uh, another good stuff I would like to share with you. I asked you last month on how to apply Hoponopono for my sales. Glad to say after more than 18 months of not achieving my goals, I made it in January, hitting more than my target. I am glad that my affirmation is working. This lady, she works in a pharmaceutical company and she sent this to me. She said, I have been achieving my sales in my company since I joined the company, um, but I did not hit my target recently. And that is her target was actually, she was at, on the 12th of May, she had 62,000 ringgit of worth of sales only. So what she did was, if you look at the next one, she says, so uh, I spoke to Mr. Kathy and uh, there was a big gap. So I did HP, HP is Hoponopono. Eh? She said, she, she wrote down the target one, she did Hoponopono. And then what happened was, she, on the 28th of May, look at that, eh? 12th of May was 62,000. 28th of May, she is, her sales target was 129,000. Can you imagine that? Eh? In two, why all she did was she wrote the target and did Hoponopono. She wrote the customer's name, did Hoponopono. She did her target. Uh, second last testimonial. My sister had an accident 2019, went into a coma by head injuries. The doctors did not give much hope. We were devastated. I called Mr. Kathy for help. He said, all the family members must write the sister's name because it's karma. Huh? Or use the picture and do Hoponopono. So they all, he, these are Indians. Huh? So they said, uh, you know, uh, um, Lord Muruga, I love you. I'm sorry, but thank you. Or Lord Ganesha. I love you. So if you're a Muslim, you can say, Ya Allah, um, you know, and then do Allah. Or if you're a Christian, yeah, whatever they did. You know what happened? She woke up within 24 hours and is in perfect health. Just a, just a point of um, uh, information for my Muslim friends. If you want to say, Ya Allah, but you don't want to say, I love you. I'm sorry, please will be thank you. I have a lot of trainers. I have a lot of people who teach the law of attraction to Muslims. Normally, we suggest they say, uh, instead of saying, I love you, I'm sorry, thank you. As a Muslim, you can say, Ya Allah. You say, Alhamdulillah, uh, Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar, and Astaghfirullah. I repeat, eh? um, al Alhamdulillah, Subhanallah, uh, Allahu Akbar, and Astaghfirullah 20 times. It's a zikir, eh? And um, uh, and what will happen? It will also change. And I want to tell you my last testimonial. Huh? Mr. Kathy attended my two-hour talk, just like this talk. Huh? And he says, for years, I've not peacefully slept due to work and life stress. Upon leaving your talk, I kept repeating Hoponopono nonstop. Finally, that day, I had such a sound, deep sleep that my wife thought I had died. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I made much peace now. So my friends, that's what it is. Okay, so I've come to the end of the talk. In fact, I've already passed six minutes past 10. Of course, we started 10. 836, I think. So that's all. What I want you to do, I, I'm going to ask the admin to open the chat box. If you have any questions, please put the questions. Uh, meanwhile, while you're writing down the questions, I'm just going to show you my ID. So if you want to contact me, please take a picture of this. Um, you can either go to my Facebook ID uh, under Kathy Gisu Sivalingam. You can actually see the programs I do. There are a lot of, I have a lot of uh, video recordings. I have a lot of programs. Doing MCU, I did a lot of free programs. You can go and have a look at it. Currently, I've got a paid program for eight weeks. You can also get the details from there. 
for those of you who want to contact me directly or whatever, you can actually WhatsApp me. Please, some of the people who invited you today are certified law of trainers. In fact, they were certified um, law of trainers about two weeks ago by me, about 10 days ago. So you can also talk to them. They also can guide you. Or you can also contact me, uh, WhatsApp me, or you can actually also email me. Is that clear? So with that, I'm going to end my talk now, and I'm going to look at a chat box and see whether you have any questions. So please take a picture. I'm going to give you 10 seconds. If you want to contact me, my, my Facebook ID is this. So if you go on my paid program, I will bring you into a, a Facebook group, which is only for people who have, been, who have paid me. And that one, you know, payment is 99 ringgit, by the way, for eight weeks, huh? 99 ringgit for eight weeks. And that program is where you'll actually uh, follow me for eight weeks. Yeah? And I'll teach you everything in detail, all right? Uh, each week I'll do uh, sessions, yeah? In Tamil and English. Okay, uh, enough said. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing now. Okay, brilliant. Okay. Um, somebody said, can I, can I show, can you show me tool one? Okay. Um, now, uh, uh, somebody asked me for tool one and tool two. Under allowing tool one is, um, please write uh, whatever you're grateful for every day. That's the tool one. Eh? Under the allowing part, tool one is allow, uh, write down your gratefulness every day. Tool two is, you must do things that gives you blessings and avoid things that gives you curses. Okay. Uh, any, any any other questions? Um, uh, Dean, Dean, can you open up the chat so people can uh, ask questions? Okay, let me open up. Yeah, okay. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I didn't realize it's written privately. Anybody has got a question? Raise your hands. At least I know you've got questions. Anybody got questions? Is there anybody got questions? Oh, wow. I saw good, man. Everybody, no question. Wow. Okay, any questions? Can you please put that? Yeah, please ask any questions. You can write it in the chat box i'll answer questions of course i've come to the end of the presentation those of you who want to leave you can leave because my talk was only for only 90 minutes only 90 minutes but for those of you who have got questions please ask your questions i will answer your questions if you want to stay on until i finish the questions i would love to have you stay on with me and the rest of you if you want to know more please go to like i said the person who invited you uh, yeah of course hey, if you like my talk please uh, put some comment la you like my talk okay one of the question is how much is the eight week program is 99 ringgit for eight weeks. Okay. For the whole of eight weeks, you have, it's only 99 ringgit. I will do eight different sessions. I will do in detail and all the recording, all the recording will be available for the next one year for you to be a uh, viewer. All the recording will be available for you. Um, go to my Facebook, please go to my Facebook. Uh, people are asking how to go to my paid program. Go to my Facebook. It's in my Facebook account. You just scroll, you'll say there, eight weeks program, eh? the ultimate program to attract, uh, well, you can go to the program, okay? The, the program actually already started. Eh? I started first week of January. Today we are on the 4th of January. So this week I'll do module four, but module one, two, and three is already recorded, is in the Facebook group. So once you pay, I'll admit you into the group and it's, it's, it's there, you can go and watch it and it's available for the next 365 days. So you can go and watch it anytime. There'll be every Thursday I speak in uh, English, Every Saturday, I do it in Tamil. Eh? Um, okay, now questions. Can we share what you have taught here for others? Yes, please. Please go and share to as many people as possible. Um, in, in Facebook, during the MCO, during the MCO, I came out with something called a 14 day program, which is a free program. So if you go to my Facebook account, not my group, eh, Facebook account, if you scroll down, uh, go back to uh, May and June and July, you'll actually see all the exercises as well. So if you don't want to pay the 99 ringgit, you can actually go and get all this free and you can share with other people as well. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you very much. A lot of people. Yes. Claire, you're asking whether I have a flyer for this. Uh, it's in the Facebook or WhatsApp me. I'll send you the details for the 99 ringgit program. Please WhatsApp me. Noraisha, thank you so much. Uh, you've actually indicated for Muslims. You say, uh, you say, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, Subhanallah and uh, Astaghfirullah. Okay. Right. Hi, Mr. Kate. Um, Who is this? Eh? Lali. This is Lali. Yes, Lali. You have a question? Yeah. Uh, no, actually, I want to personally thank you for all this. Oh, you're most welcome. Theory. You're most welcome. You're most welcome. Thank you. Uh, there's another question. How do we train our children? Uh, uh, we write, okay, for your children, you can write your name and ask them to do. If they're more than 12 years or 13 years old, you can tell the children, teach them also that if they have a problem with a friend, if they've got a problem with a teacher, they can write the teacher's name. And then they can put the hand on top and mention, dear God, 
I love you. I'm sorry, please. And what happens? The relationship with the teacher will improve. But if they're less than 12 years old, they, they don't understand this. You can write their children's name and actually do it for them as well. Okay. Any other questions? Otherwise, uh, just share with me how you feel about the talk. Did you enjoy it? I'm so sorry. I, I, because Zoom sessions actually uh, I cannot do more than 90 minutes because there's no lasting power. In fact, when I started the talk, there were 96 people. Now I've only 69 people. Okay. So obviously, a lot of people will leave because they cannot spare 90 minutes. You know? That's why I, I, I had to reduce. Normally, I do two hours, you know, but I had to stick it to 90 minutes. I'm so sorry about that. Huh? But whatever information that you needed, I've given. I have not shot, I have not shot nothing. Just that I could not give a lot of explanation because it's only 90 minutes. But if you do whatever I've taught you, I'm telling you, your life will change. You don't even have to pay 99 ringgit. You don't have to go for my program. Only if you're hungry to learn more, then you can go into it. Okay? Um, and all, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Um, any other questions? Okay. You want to train your children? I already told you what to do. Um, um, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Can question. we write more than one name? Very, very good. Very good question. Yes. Whenever you, whenever you want to write names of people you want to do erasing, or you want to please, yeah, you can write ten names, twenty names, no problem. So what you could do is. Uh, you can write the names of the people. Let's say you've got 10 people in the company and don't get along with you. You write down all the 10 names, put the, your hand on all the 10 names at the same time and say, I, dear God, I love you. I'm sorry. To, uh, please me thank you 20 times. So you erase at the same time for all 10 people. Yeah, you can do that. Sorry, you can put it in. If you are erasing also, you can actually erase all the names at the same time. You don't need to do one by one. That means from the top to bottom, you go erasing. As you're doing erasing from the top to bottom, you say, I love you. I'm sorry. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. You do it 20 times. Okay. That's why you can do. So you can write more than one name. Okay. Um, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Any other questions, my friends? Yeah, somebody raise a Malati, raise your hand. Are you saying you have a question? If you have a question, just unmute yourself. Tell me your name and tell me what's your question. Anybody? If you have any questions. Oh, total silence. Shuman, you have a lot of questions just now, Shuman. Now, no questions. Okay. If no questions, uh, my friends, thank you very much. I really appreciate all of you being here. I think um, if you're happy with my talk, I think what you should do, thank the person who invited you here. Because I think you were invited by different, different people. What you should do, immediately send them a message and say thank you to them. Because they are the one who actually were influential in you listening to my talk. And uh, so send them a message and say thank you to them because the blessings should actually go to them. All right. So with that, I just want to pass you back to my MC, Inche Dane. Dane, thank you very much for everything. Dane, I'll pass it back to you.